welcome to SDL Reconnect. This is the first session in a webinar series to help you prepare for a future where content, communication and collaboration really have never been more important. Over this session and the upcoming webinars, we aim to help you to prepare for a reimagined future, use content to deliver impactful experiences globally, get the most out of your digital communication content strategy, work smart, be agile and be effective, and most importantly, engage with your peers and like-minded people. So we're here to meet, learn and share. A little bit of quick housekeeping to get us started. So you should see at the bottom of your control panel, um, at the bottom of your screen, your control panel, you can set the console as you like or leave it as it is on the default setting. One area to point out is the Q&A button. Uh, we invite you to ask questions uh, throughout um, the session today and we'll put them to the group at the end in the Q&A session. We also love to get your feedback and so see the survey uh, on the control panel as well, the feedback button. Um, you can send that throughout the session today and uh, we'll also be sending you an email with a recording after the series if you'd like to listen again or share with colleagues. If at any time you are struggling, if the audio cuts out or we're not seeing the slides refresh. Um, if you're on a PC, press F5 key, or if you're on a Mac, it's Command and R, and that should refresh your webcast. So just to introduce myself quickly, um, I'm Alexandra Jarvis. I'm the um, SVP in charge of corporate communications, corporate marketing and strategy here at SDL. I think we've all been through a pretty difficult time over the last few months and it's just worth starting by acknowledging that that we've had time to think about what really matters to all of us through these difficult times and how we can strive to to do better our purpose here at SDL is and always has been global understanding and we really feel that more strongly than ever before so we're not only here just to help our customers navigate what are difficult waters at the moment but to stand up for openness, inclusion and understanding in really everything we do. So just we're getting behind pride for the month of June and be assured that diversity and inclusion for our employees, all backgrounds is absolutely front and center of our corporate values. So before we kick off and I hand over to Adolfo, a quick question for you. So what is the biggest takeaway from the last two months and the ever-changing market conditions that you've been experiencing? You can drop your thoughts uh, through the Q&A um, box and we'll try and pick those up again at the end for you. So without further ado, I'm now going to hand over to Adolfo um, and Andes, SDL's Chief Executive will be bringing you up to speed with what's been going on at SDL since we last met. So over to you, Adolfo. Okay, thank you very much, Alex. And hello, everyone. Um, love to see, uh, to, to be able to see you all, uh, but I guess you all get to see me and I'll just get to say it's just great, really great to, uh, to see you all. Many of you <clears throat> probably haven't seen since we did our SDL Connect or unless we've been catching up over the phone or any of the sessions uh, of the last few months. So um, thank you for being here today with us. Thank you for taking the time uh, to listen to where we're at and where we see the challenges and the opportunities um, that we're facing. But before we start, uh, I would really would like to uh, really wish you all well. I hope that you, you're all well, uh, your family, your friends, everybody who's close to you, your colleagues, and that you have done um, well through the uh, pandemic, and that you and your businesses continue to do uh, well through this very difficult month. Um, we, uh, we have probably plenty of practice on this. We had a number of crises last year, geopolitical, nothing to do with SDL, but we had uh, big issues in Hong Kong, as you all probably read. We have issues in Lebanon. We had issues and disruptions in Chile. Uh, Paris. Uh, so we've been practicing business continuity for a while. Uh, so when all of this started and it started hitting our colleagues in, uh, in China first and then in the wider Asia region, it was just a continuation rather than the beginning. Uh, and then obviously through March, this whole uh, COVID started uh, expanding uh, east to west 
uh, into uh, Central Europe, Western Europe, Mediterranean, and then over to uh, the UK and to the US. And uh, we've been on a, on a race, I guess, like many of you might have been, uh, a race to achieve this new normal uh, that we achieve, a, ra a, a situation where everybody is working safely, Every work is working at home, everybody is productive, everybody is connected with their teams. Everybody has found a way to balance uh, this new way of working. Some of our colleagues had uh, kids to homeschool, uh, you know, a lot of the infrastructure. Fortunately, um, throughout this period and for the past few years, we've been making a lot of investments in our infrastructure, moving applications, workflows, storage and systems to the cloud. So. Very pleased to report that you know we went from sort of 45 offices to 4,500 offices uh, with very, very, very little disruption, and that we've been uh, very proactive and, and, and very busy ensuring uh, the health of our colleagues, uh, but also uh, your business continuity, uh, and trans you know we're starting to move to that sort of new way of working. Uh, virtual, um, and it's been a very, very mind-blowing digital acceleration. We've done over a thousand customer engagements. Just been really, really busy period. And as I will talk through that, I uh, really wanted to thank everybody who's been there, um, supporting us both internally at SDA, but also um, our customers. So fascinating journey. Uh, happy to compare notes next time we meet, uh, but pleased to report that um, it all went really well. I'd like to start also by acknowledging that, um, as Alex said, uh, I think uh, this uh, pandemic um, also forces you as a business to think what's important. And, uh, and obviously, we, we taken uh, our employees very seriously. Their employee safety has been um, our number one concern to start with, and making sure that they can continue to work and they can find a reasonable way to remain productive, connected but also, um, you know, able to, to, to live uh, a, a good life uh, at the same time, a balanced life, because it's been one of the most testing periods that most uh, human, pe uh, human um, have had to go through at peacetime. So I've um, been you know, really pleased to report that uh, our colleagues um, are acknowledging that our colleagues uh, have worked really hard, uh, but they feel that we as a company have done the right things to help them serve you, and most of them feel that we've been able to serve you, and the feedback you guys have been sending has been uh, really encouraging, so thank you for that. Uh, and you've been sending uh, support uh, messages um, for the whole period, um, whether we've been uh, helping you uh, with something you were doing on emergency communication or some clinical work on some medical devices, or you had a lot more uh, regulatory filings to do very quickly in multiple places, or whether you needed uh, things like ventilators, operating instructions, translated and made available, or you needed work uh, with a vaccine, or you were managing a community of people, an open community around 3D printing that could help uh, the medical community and hospitals through that. Uh, we've been trying to be there to help you. And if you are online and you've been seeing a big shift to e-commerce, we've been trying to help you to get those e-commerce properties properly populated with the right digital content in the right format, in the right language, empowering those systems and keeping those systems up, that content management, keeping your um, machine translation systems going, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I'm really, really proud. Probably the highlight for me of the pandemic um, is to see that the Net Promoter score uh, that you've been telling us over the last three months have actually uh, gone up uh, in the period. And I, I am really proud for the work um, that um, we have done together. And thank you for, for the support and the acknowledgement of that. But it's been all about continuing and staying the course. Uh, this was very important. Uh, yes, like every business, we've looked around, we've looked at opportunities, to, to sort of protect our business. We looked at discretionary spending. We looked at opportunities where we could prepare for the worst. But we've been very, very focused on not taking any value away from the future. So we've been continuing delivering on, on the avenues of, of value creation in the way we engage with you and hopefully in the solutions and the products that you can get from us um, to go through the pandemic and way past the pandemic 
and be successful in that sort of post-COVID world. So we continue to invest in the first half of 2020 when everything that has to do with services automation, automating workflows, getting information in and out easier, faster, quicker, trapping the information, transforming uh, all of that data into information, into dashboards, and making sure that we can give you a better service, faster service, higher quality service, and more importantly, the data that you need associated with that service. Language Cloud was a big uh, project of ours in 19, and you heard us talk a lot about Language Cloud throughout 19. You saw it showcased uh, throughout 19. You saw it on SDL Connect. And we've been continuing to work uh, frantically on, on uh, Language Cloud over 30 different releases. And we've continued to add capabilities uh, on multiple areas. And we've been continuing to build on top of, of Language Cloud. And you'll be hearing a lot more uh, from us over the next few weeks on how we have connected language cloud with new services language cloud with the translation productivity suite trados and how we making a language cloud centric uh, language tech ecosystem flourish and and as i said we've been staying the course and and um, continuing with the investment machine translation was another area of significant progress in 2019 not only in quantity and coverage of language pairs but in quality in the ability to deploy it in multiple uh, um, use cases that you've been uh, expecting, helping us to define uh, the price points, and most importantly, helping you train and adapt those engines in the way you want it in a totally secure way. So the investment has continued that way uh, throughout um, um, this part of the year, and you're gonna see a lot more in, in terms of uh, adaptability of engines and capabilities both on the cloud side of uh, machine translation, as well as you can see on the edge on-premise side. And then last but not least, all the work that we've been doing on the Tridium family and Tridium DX, um, I think if there is a word to describe uh, the, 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 is, is the first six months of the year, is making progress on usability. Um, the, the products are already very powerful, but I think we've made significant progress in terms of making it easier to use, easier to collaborate, easier to look, easier to edit. And, and through different uh, product versions, we've made the same things happen, both in, um, in docs, and that was announced already last month, and you're going to see the upcoming release on site. So all in all, we're very happy with the uh, progress, stay in the course, delivering on that linguistic AI set of capabilities that we set out. And none of this has taken a, a stop, a pause, or a detour through COVID-19. Now, COVID opens a set of uh, opportunities because while the virus will go away, and it's already starting to go away or at least lose strength uh, in certain parts of the world while it's still uh, ravaging other parts of the world. Um, the economic impact is starting to be felt, but even the economic impact will come and will eventually go. Um, but some of the transformations that COVID has brought will probably stay here for a long, long time. Because we, we are quite excited about the uh, concept of digital acceleration. Uh, some industries uh, have seen an acceleration of three to five years in like two months thinking like uh, e-fitness, right, and, and sort of training from home. Um, education, on, online uh, e-learning, that has always sort of been there, but it was more a tick in the box. Right now has become right front and center of schools, high schools, some of the best universities uh, in the planet are really over-rotating to online learning. Similar to ask in the enterprise world, how do you train on board recruit new employees. So we're going to be seeing a number of things that are going to be uh, uh, really accelerating e-health. So there's a lot of things that are going to see uh, um, significant acceleration. We're also going to see the need for most uh, organizations to become more digitally savvy. Um, so whether it's government, uh, health, uh, and a number of others. And consumers are also going to become more digitally savvy. They're going to be valuing more the experience. They're going to be valuing more the sort of fragmented, interrupted um, journeys. And they're really going to want a much better service than the one uh, brands have given them over the past few years. So all of that means that for us in, in business, we've got a great opportunity 
to now build those content and services and applications and make them really effective and really impactful for this new global audience that is going to be more digital. So that means more formats, that means more frequent updates, there's going to be better uh, uh, post-sales and pre-sales uh, um, information integration. It's going to mean a, a lot more uh, accurate, more agile uh, SQU product information on websites. It's going to be more precise, more frequent uh, translation work and content management. So I think overall, it's going to be putting uh, a lot of uh, opportunities for us. Now, internally, I think we're all going to have to become uh, more digitally savvy. Every business will have to be uh, more transformed. We will, I think, an SDL have to become internally more and more digital, continue with our transformation, uh, attract and develop more uh, digital skills, because the future will be one where, yes, you have to have great customer interaction, great uh, uh, relationship building. So you really have to have an operational high value, high touch side of the business. But we are going to have to be really good at, at the digital side of the business. So and I think the opportunities that it opens for you and that it opens for, for us are tremendous and, and very exciting. But if you were to ask me about the last uh, um, few months, um, I would say the number one uh, priority that we had once we went past continuity that was communication, uh, which is really making sure that we had clear communication to everyone, uh, internally, externally, to customers, to shareholders, uh, to partners. It is really, really important uh, uh, to communicate, communicate well, potentially over communicate, but communicate uh, well because it's, this was uh, really important. And I don't think in any other time of uh, the SDL company, uh, we've, we've communicated as much as we've had to do over these past 100 days. The second thing that um, I think has become uh, very obvious is that it is really important to listen uh, and, and, um, and sort of remember that sort of nature sometimes gave you two ears and a mouth uh, for a reason. And, and we've, we've been uh, listening uh, sharing uh, some of the stuff, uh, communicating, hearing from you, uh, hearing from partners, um, leveraging some of the experiences from our employees. And, and there's been a lot more collaboration. Um, I've been surprised about the level of collaboration uh, that I have sensed internally at SDL, but also between SDL and our customers. I, um, I was reflecting to my executive team uh, earlier in the week that this has probably been the most collaborative, uh, collaborative period that I have seen in my career. Uh, and that sort of comes from listening and, and, and acting. So that was really important. And then the third point is about the digital acceleration. Uh, that is personally for me the, the, the one that is really exciting. And yes, there's been a catastrophic set of events around COVID. And there's been some really uh, awful set of events. And there's been a really sad um, loss of life, and, and there's been a lot of uh, businesses that are going to suffer, and, and nothing takes away from that. Uh, but every time there is a disruption, every time there is a difficulty, every time there is a crisis, um, there are opportunities to also create some good, uh, uh, to do well and do good, and, and those are the ones that I think a company like SDL should be focused on um, at this stage. So, we, we believe that going forward in this world of new opportunities post-COVID, this world of digital acceleration, we, we've got to go and, and be out there with you front and center, trying to help you answer those five questions, right? Which is, how, how do we manage that global communication for impact? And how do I get that consistency of brand across channels and across languages and tone of voices. How do I get that multi-language, multi-format uh, communication right? The second one is how do I deal with this content explosion? Uh, because it's, it's a lot more of it, it's a lot more uh, formats, it's a lot more types, it's sitting in different parts of the organization and it's gonna be different in different systems. It's gonna be totally fragmented and ultimately it's gonna be hitting the customer 
on multiple touch, uh, touch points. How do I make sense out of all of that content? The third one is around uh, automation uh, and intelligence and, and linguistic artificial intelligence. How do I get that to, to be agile, uh, processing language, understanding language, pre uh, translating language? And how do I really make it more automated so that I can spend more time on my content strategy or my translation strategy rather than doing the very repetitive things that a linguistic AI or automation could really do. The final one, sorry, it's not, not, the, the fourth one is uh, security. Uh, when you work remotely, when you go digital, when a lot of your company operates uh, more outside uh, the, the Chinese walls of your corporate uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, you've got to make sure that you've got the right workflows, you've got the right processes, the right tools, uh, the right systems in place to ensure that you've got end-to-end -end security of your content and that the content doesn't leak and it doesn't get uh, um, stolen and, and, and copied or, or leaked to the media when it, when it shouldn't be. Um, and, and then, um, and I think overall, content there today has been just an ingredient to a content creation, management, uh, translation, and publication. It's been like a, this supply chain of content. But along this process, uh, there are a lot of insights uh, that we can start deriving from that content. What am I learning about how am I creating the content? How much content gets actually used? Uh, which content gets monetized? Which content have I translated for nothing? Which one I should really do a much better translation because it's giving me money? Which touch points are really working? All of those insights uh, we, we should start building on because now technology uh, allows you to do that. And we believe if, if companies spend time on those five questions, uh, they're really going to take advantage of these opportunities. And uh, we will uh, do whatever it takes at SDL to equip ourselves with the, uh, the capabilities uh, in people, systems, software, and innovation to help you um, do that. Uh, because we believe the change that we've been talking to you about uh, over the last couple of years of moving from manual to automated, from moving from very discrete processes to processes where we have intelligence, from moving from very sequential uh, content creation, content translation. Uh, now it's, it's, it's happening in parallel and is creating additional opportunities. And this is going to apply whether you're talking about operating instructions, manuals, uh, online cloud services, e-health, managed healthcare, filings, uh, any, um, any sort of uh, documentation, online um, stores, uh, VR, car dashboards, it is exactly the same principle and it's gonna apply across uh, different industries. So um, I'd like to tell you about a little something that we've been working on um, in the background. I think uh, if you recall some of my uh, uh, conversations over the last few months, I said, well, you'll, you'll see in the future we're gonna be coming out to market with something that is that is new. Um, we are actually coming out to market with something that is quite new, quite unique. Uh, it's built uh, on language cloud and it's built on our neural machine translation capabilities. Um, and I think you're gonna find it uh, very interesting. So if I can just play a little video. Okay, so Slate, this smart language translation for the enterprise. Um, well, it's, um, it's a very uh, unique uh, tool. It's a totally uh, automated, born in the cloud, secure, uh, machine-first translation utility. Uh, think of it as a uh, translation on demand. It's something that is built on the uh, language cloud translation management capabilities and it just really helps us address some of the market trends that have been emerging where some customers have wanted uh, low-touch, 
very fast turnaround, low cost utility, where you want to move away from the old world of pair word, you wanted to move to a subscription uh, based service, high volume service, and one, by the way, um, that if you wanted to order some uh, services on top, um, you could do that. Uh, I, th I think there is a really uh, important uh, space for this offering. It's an offering that is going to be very helpful for people who are non-translation departments, and it's also going to be very helpful for people who are in translation departments who have a particular high volume uh, loads. It is going to be um, donor at arm's length uh, from what you would normally expect from, from uh, the high value uh, account teams at SDL. And one that I'm inviting you to um, just sign up for, uh, just do some validation. You've got the, uh, and the URL at the bottom uh, of the page then you're going to find it really interesting. As I said, not a solution for everything, but for that particular workload is going to be the best solution you're able to find in the market today. So before we go to the Q&A, um, this is some of the uh, um, words that you've been sending uh, with regards to uh, uh, the, uh, the, the question of Alex of, as to what's, what's your key takeaway. It doesn't surprise me to see uh, uh, some... Uh, very common themes. Don't think a lot of them have uh, really changed uh, uh, that much. But here we see a lot more on e-learning, content intelligence, um, more solutions, SaaS, cloud, um, things that make perfect sense. So uh, without further ado, uh, I want to quickly um, take us through uh, what's coming up, because um, reconnect it's a uh, way to uh, talk to you about um, uh, different things. So this is sort of the uh, uh, the welcome. You're going to have another one uh, uh, next week on June um, on June 16th. I'm looking at it now. It's around translation intelligence. You're going to have the week uh, two days later. You're going to have one with a special focus around um, finance and legal and in the regulated space. And then there's going to be uh, one later uh, on June the 23rd. It's going to be around intelligent content. Uh, for being, We're going to see a lot of the work uh, that we're doing on, on Tridian. You can all sign. You can sign up for all of them. They're obviously free. We would love to have you there. I know that all three are not all relevant to all of you. Uh, but uh, please come there, um, sign up, spend some time with the SDL team, um, share uh, your worries, share your concerns, share your findings ask your questions, become part of the community, and uh, um, uh, let, let us just work on these three themes together. So um, we said more about listening. So now I have got uh, um, a great panel. Um, got a panel with uh, another uh, seven executives uh, from the team. Uh, Alex will be uh, um, hosting it and managing it. I've also got our... Um, Chief Revenue Officer, Thomas Labart there. We've got our Head of Products. Uh, uh, Marcus is there, our Chief Technology Officer, Asad Utam, our Head of Language uh, Services um, Delivery, uh, Maria Schnell. We've got Betsy Fallon, Head of uh, um, Customer uh, Services, and uh, uh, Christoph, who heads our regulated industry. So I think we've got a good panel uh, to address any of the questions that Either you have already submitted or you will be submitting as we speak. So, Alex, um, over to you. Thank you, Adolfo. Yeah, do please keep putting your Q&A um, into the system. We'll try and pick up as many as we can. So just in terms of some of those um, changes and takeaways that some of you have had over the last few months, so lots of pointing to some permanent changes, particularly around working conditions, um, much more remote working, fewer centralised offices. Um, a lot of people picking up on the agility and willingness to adapt amongst um, teams and contacts and and suppliers, um, and the criticality of content for everybody. And the old adage that change is constant. I think we've all learned that very much over the last few months. So going on to some Q&A, and as I say, please do keep dropping them through. Uh, I'm going to start with one for, for Thomas. Um, so at a time when the world has accelerated its digital transformation, how does SDL plan to contribute to the transformation of localization? 
Thanks, Alex, and hi, every, everyone. Um, I'm sure you've, you've seen some of those uh, surveys recently asking who has been the biggest driver of digital transformation over the past month, whether it's been your CEO, your city, or COVID. And I think it's fair to say that uh, COVID has definitely accelerated a lot uh, digital transformation. So I think our view on this is that uh, the best way to accelerate digital transformation starts with technology. Adolfo spoke a lot about innovative solutions that automate uh, really all human processes as much as possible while still keeping the human element on top of it uh, to really extract ultimately the value from uh, from your content. And that's really the way we, we look at it. So localization doesn't exist outside of content uh, if it wants to deliver value. And so that's, that's really where we start. We look at how to help our customers ultimately derive the best amount of value from their content, how to structure it, uh, how to you know, create it in the first place, manage it, structure it, and then ultimately deliver it to uh, all the different audiences uh, and through all the different channels. Uh, and we have a very structured way to, to approach this. Uh, we have developed a set of uh, content audits for our customers. Uh, and I think we are fortunate to uh, benefit from the long history of software and technology that we have in the company together with the breadth of our uh, services portfolio. So obviously very keen to go into a lot more detail with uh, anyone who requires over the coming weeks and months. Great, and thank you. And um, I'm going to ask this one to, to Betsy. So it's a similar topic, but what is the best way to come up to speed on translation products and services that would add value to my organization? Betsy, I think you're on mute. I was on mute. Do you hear me now? <laughs> that classic error. <laughs> I know. Well, I got myself on camera, but for, forgot to take myself on mute. Sorry about that. Um, so anyway, thank you for that question. Not sure who asked it, but I'm guessing um, we have both a number of existing customers on the phone today, as well as some potential new customers. Uh, if you are a customer currently and you're using an SDL service or an SDL product and you're interested in learning about another one that might add value to your organization, I definitely recommend that you engage with your account manager, who I know will be very willing and interested in bringing in the right subject matter experts from SDL to talk to you more about some of the things that we could make available to you. Um, Adolfo talked about Slate. That's probably something that a number of you are going to be interested in drilling down a little bit more on. So I highly recommend that you follow up with your account manager on that so we can show you some additional demos of that. Um, so I think account management is one of the best ways to engage to figure out what else we could offer to you, but also taking advantage of some of these events that we're offering, continuing um, particularly on the language side, the one on June 16th, and if you're in regulated industries, the one on June 18th. And then finally, another way to engage, I think, in terms of how you can add value from SDL products and services and also learn from others that are already using those products and services. Well, we don't have an in-person SDL Connect happening until next year. There are channels like SDL Community where you can get very involved and you could start engaging with others, not just SDL resources, but peers out in the industry that could help share with you some of the experiences and successes that they're having with our products and services. Great, thank, Be thank you, Betsy. So um, another question about our usage of artificial intelligence and uh, machine translated uh, post editing. So what are SDL's preparations for the use of those technologies? And I'll hand that to Maria Schnell, please. Hi there. Um, in a nutshell, um, the preparations that we've made internally and externally is we have plenty of engines for all sorts of um, language combinations that are available. Um, from a production perspective, um, all of our resources, be they internal or external, are prepared to, um, to post-edit uh, using machine translation engines. 
Um, and we produce in, in a centralized production platform um, that is clearly also available to all of our technology customers that essentially helps us collect all of the um, production data to optimize um, any existing machine translation engines, but also help us with um, additional um, artificial intelligence automation around um, faster routing um, of work to resources, um, quality control, um, expenditure control, etc. So that's in a nutshell what is available um, from a, to us from a production perspective, but it's also, of course, um, available to our customers within the secure supply chain offering um, that we have built and have in use internally. That's it. Great, thank you, Maria. Um, this one I'm going to give to Marcus as a product um, question. So do you have product features that allow you to support the complexities inherent to product information for equipment manufacturers? Yeah, so there is a very detailed answer to this, but I won't go into that one. Um, being mindful of time, sort of succinctly, we have the ability within Tridian, uh, we have a Tridian integration framework that allows you to integrate with third-party repositories, in particular with product information management systems and with metadata systems. And what this can effectively give you is a common repository virtually to orchestrate, manage um, the content that you create with regards to product and manufacturing. So if you update it in the CMS, or you update it in the product information management system, it will then uh, basically sync up at once. So you don't then have that drift going apart. And as I said, there's a lot more to that. So definitely very happy to take that offline if anyone wants to contact us or contact me and get into the uh, dirty detail of the Tridian integration capability with actually exactly what the question has in mind in terms of solving. So that's it. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, one for Christoph and regulated industries. So any specific offerings or guidance for life sciences and healthcare? Yes, and uh, thank you, Alex, for the question. Good afternoon, everyone. Good morning. So in terms of life sciences or healthcare, we really supported our global account uh, with us and sustaining a high level of services. We support the top clinical research organization, top pharma, top medical companies. And in terms of offering, I'm very proud to say that we kind of launch free of charge our machine translation technology and make it available really for the researchers, the scientists, the healthcare professional working on the COVID-19. And through the SDL machine translation, they were able to translate everything from the latest clinical research paper on the virus, the clinical case review, and the patient's medical record. So really, we were hoping to remove any language barrier to bring uh, the information directly to the researcher uh, to help them really in, in their journey. Thank you. And another one for you. Has a release date been set for Slate? So we're all excited. It's in June. We are looking at end of June, so it's almost there. We are counting the days, so I will say it should be the last week of June. Fantastic. Thank you, Christoph. Uh, just a quick one for Betsy. Um, might SDL consider making a remote or video training available to consultants who can't attend on-site training um, by clients? Definitely. We already do have that capability, in fact. Um, so I would recommend what you do the to outreach and learn more. The um, email address where stuff get picked, where requests like this get picked up, is learn at sdl.com. But we do have a number of courses that we can offer remote, so we can tailor them to your needs. Um, we can do as many as you want to offer them in two or three hour chunks, whatever you'd like to do. And then the other thing that we have that allow people to go at their own pace are e-learning courses. So. We definitely offer that capability and would be happy to work with you on that. So I encourage you to outreach back on some of your specific needs and we'll be sure to help. Thank you. We have a, a question from the audience about how Language Cloud impacts um, some of our other TMS products and what the outlook is for how those all sit together. Um, Marcus, is that one you want to take or, or Thomas? I can definitely. Um start and then if Thomas wants to add for sure 
Um, we continue the development of the existing TMS offerings, right? That's We're not abandoning those by any means. And what will happen moving forward as we reach parity with Language Crow to those offerings, Betsy's team, actually part of Betsy's team and part of my team, will be working with customers on how to transition into Language Cloud because obviously at some point, further innovations and such are going to be focused there. Uh, but for the immediate future, absolutely no disruption, no abandonment or anything like that. So please, I hope there's no anxi anxiety around that. And then of course, there is the question of people who have on-premise solutions, which is an even uh, longer sort of, uh, let's say transition roadmap to be had, but in any event, um, you know, Adolfo has made it very clear to us that you know we are to focus on customers, customer satisfaction, customer productivity. We are not to create disruption. This is not meant to be punitive for choices people have made in the past. All of these things are coming into play as we consider this roadmap and move forward. Um, and Thomas, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. No, I think you summarized it well. Uh, for me. Really, uh, there's going to be an evolution path to language cloud for uh, for many customers. We are going to be there uh, to work with them through that journey. Uh, the idea is also to deliver additional value through language cloud, not just uh, parity. There are definitely going to be some important elements that uh, customers are going to want to uh, to maintain. But obviously, there's there's a big range of uh, of value added that uh, Language Cloud offers. And I think the, the one thing that is really uh, even puzzling me and, and my team is to see the pace of innovation uh, for Language Cloud. Uh, when you enter that world of cloud native products, uh, modern architectures, uh, you are having iteration on the products and, and innovation that is ad being added uh, at an incredible pace. And I think that's really exciting. So we'll really handle this uh, at the pace of every customer, uh, satisfying their needs. And I think it's going to be actually quite an, an exciting journey. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, so one question about cost and resourcing. Uh, so during the COVID-19 pandemic, cost and resource have become a barrier to some of the things we've been talking about. How do we deliver all the content we need to in a cost-effective way? That still makes an impact. Um, I might hand that back to Thomas as well, but others feel free to chip in. Thanks, Alex. Uh, definitely cost consciousness, uh, cost management is, is super critical, uh, especially during the, the current times. Uh, the key to this, in our view, is really to address what we, we call content tiering. Ultimately, uh, often enterprises are handling their content based on history or based on their organization and how the different departments uh, are, are organized. There is a real benefit, and I mean cost benefit, in looking at the overall content tiers uh, that are present in a business and how we can ultimately assign the right workflow, the right solution uh, in a cost-effective way to each of them. And just to illustrate that, uh, we really serve the full range of content tiers from really high value, uh, you know, short form uh, marketing content that ultimately needs to be translated and adapted culturally uh, in different countries, down to content that can be fully machine translated and all the shades of gray in between. And I think that's re really where the cost benefit strikes, uh, when we can take the moment uh, to work strategically with a customer on uh, defining those content tiers, working with the different stakeholders to assign the right solution to each of them. Uh, and I think there is also a very long-term benefit to that, not just in terms of cost, but also in terms of the value that can, can be ultimately derived from each of those content tiers. So I think that's probably the, the piece that I feel mo most excited about in, in our job. And uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we have a lot of uh, very strategic content audit engagements with our customers. We can also recommend external partners to do this uh, if uh, a client wants to have a very neutral view on this. And, uh, and I think that's really the right starting point uh, to derive cost benefits as well as added value. 
Thank you. Just to remind you, do keep putting your questions through. Uh, so it's a similar question, and, and we possibly have touched on this already, but um, it's a sort of where do I start question. So uh, our business struggles with content complexity. We've talked about a lot of things, but but where do where do we start? So I hand that to to Betsy. Sure, I think that that is sort of a follow up actually to what um, Thomas was just talking about and some of the services, whether you want to work with SDL or elsewhere is certainly a choice that is yours and we respect that. But one of the areas that we can offer and are finding an uptick in interest with clients right now is around some of our content supply chain advisory services that come by our pre-sales and professional services team. So we're really finding that it's a great opportunity to engage with clients who have a variety of business needs, whether it's that acceleration of their digital transformation or because of the COVID situation, looking to optimize costs and find more efficiencies. Uh, we're very interested and happy to engage with you to better understand what your business goals are, run through some workshops to do process mapping and sort of understand your entire supply chain from a people process and technology perspective, and then see how and give you a set of recommendations that you can utilize uh, working with us or working with others, whether it's our tools and technologies, our services, um, to help make sure that you can drive those cost savings and achieve those business results and leverage any of your investments to the fullest. So I think as you're facing some of the complexities around content creation, management, and delivery, um, there are a number of ways that we're happy to get engaged with you to make sure that we can embark on this journey with you. Thank you, Betsy. I've got another question about Slate, so I'll put that to Christoph. Um, so again, when is it available and who is it targeted at? And whose MT is it using and is it a crowd offering? So thank you, Alex. So we kind of looked really about, you know, kind of the segmentation that can address uh, slate. So we will go via phases initially. So we are looking at what we call some of the shadow spending, um, which is kind of what needs to be automated quickly, quick turnaround times that easy to use that you need to be able to kind of go online, get it straight away. I mean, taking an example of the crisis that we just face, um, someone who just needs kind of some policy to be translated in many languages for the next morning, you can go online, choose if it's um, machine only or if you want kind of a set of review behind it to create the documentation in multilingual. So this can address different buying centers inside some corporation, but also particular segments. So this is really some of the approach that we are taking towards a very strict segmentation, but also opportunistic based on the customer feedback that we receive in terms of launching the product. Because we did a 360 degrees with many customer in terms of how to launch it and which content should be addressed. So very important as well to mention, Alex, here that this will be a complementary offering uh, to the existing ones that we have as well. But in any case, this is done to address the market um, and to provide a self-service kind of uh, approach to our customer. Thank you. And just yeah, to clarify on those last couple of points, so it's using SDL and your machine translation as the, as the key engines where we have about 130 language pairs there and it uses our um our sdl core team around our internal in-house um yeah. translators and of course our existing freelancer network as well so it's exactly Correct. the and same just, yeah yeah with just one addition thank you we have covered this part of the question alex thank you um it's also powered by our ai technology as well which is important here to mention Exactly. Okay, so let me see. Uh, question for Maria Chanel on the um, on the supply chain side of things. So, have you experienced any supply chain disruption during this time? Which I think I think means on our freelancer network or within our translator network. Um, mm -hmm. How do we continue to deliver on uh, on time delivery? Thank you. Um, not really, actually. 
Um, one of the reasons for that is um, definitely that a big chunk of the production that we um, process on a daily basis is um, dealt with by our in-house um, translator teams. Um, the rest <laughs> goes external, but um, it goes to an um, external supply chain that is comparatively diverse. So we have a good mix of freelance translators and um, translation agencies. So there isn't, there wasn't specific um, single dependencies, for example, that could have generated a problem and could have generated a disruption that would have seriously affected um, any of um, our capability to deliver. So we haven't really seen a big disruption. There, may have been single partners that we have managed to reboot everything swiftly to not endanger any of the commitments that we had towards our customers. So, so far, everything's fine. Good stuff. Um, we've been asked for a, a piece of advice from each of the panelists on any topic. <laughs> I'll, I'll kick off, I think, we're from a communications perspective the thing that i've really seen as a consumer of content um as well as somebody who who, who runs communications is the real the cut through of authentic communications so um people want to be spoken to as human beings in an appropriate time and relevance has really changed it's not just about dropping the right email um to to talk to people about at the right point in their buying cycle it's about reaching out and speaking to them as as human beings and, and understanding where they are in their lives at the moment i think those are the communications that have really broken through for me um i'll hand to betsy one piece of advice or encouragement getting back online um well, stay the course. It certainly has been an interesting few months, at least where I am. The weather's getting nice and things are opening up a little bit, which I think is good. Um, I think from an SDL perspective and partnering with us, I'm one of those people in the company that tends to travel a lot. I really like getting out in front of customers and uh, with my employees. And that obviously has changed. I have not um, been anywhere other than about 20 miles outside my house since I came back from India in early March. Um, but I have found that the collaboration has continued in a really productive way. I think Adolfo touched on this a little bit earlier in terms of internal to SDL, but I've done a number of QBRs with our clients that I think have been as productive as any that we ever would have had in person. Um, I run our Voice of the Customer program for SDL, and that has been, um, I thought there might be some slowdown in our ability to engage with customers on that, but if anything, I think we're seeing an increase there. So I guess in terms of a word of advice or, or on behalf of the exec team, I'm sure I'm speaking for all of us, um, we really are in listening mode. We want to stay in listening mode. We want that to be very bi-directional. So what I'd like to do is even if things are virtual more than they would have been in the past is keep that dialogue open and make sure that you feel like you're being heard. And if you're not, be sure to reach out to any one of us. And um, we're always happy to hear your opinions and make sure that we can help. So please, please do outreach. Thank you. And watch, um, watch, watch Homeland. Uh, I did finally finish um, Homeland. If nobody's seen it, I finished season eight. It was, it was a, plow through, but it was really good. So I'd suggest that too, if you've got some binge watching to put on your list. Thanks, Betsy. Um, as I had, we haven't come to you during this session. So um, a few words from you, please. The man who pretty much yeah. put the entirety of SDL on our working from home within a few weeks. Yes, no, thank you, um, Alex, and thank you, everybody, for joining us this afternoon. I think I've had a pretty easy ride today, but I suspect that for the next one or two of these, uh, I suspect I'll uh, probably have a little bit more to say. I, I guess that's sort of, I, I share with my colleagues a lot of uh, a lot of what they said so far. I think if I could if I could give you a piece of advice that, you know, we did ourselves first and the piece of advice I would give you, the first one, I think, is plan and rehearse. You know, we... we we had thought about a number of crisis scenarios, as Adolfo mentioned right at the beginning of our session, um, in terms of what we might do in order to continue to fulfill our promise to you, our customers. And so when it came to, um, as Alex said, moving to a completely virtual 
um, you know, virtual um, way of working, we'd already done a lot of the groundwork and we'd already done four essentially slightly different flavors of that uh, as a consequence of some of the events last year. So I think, you know, plan and rehearse and plan and more rehearse uh, is, is one thing I would always say. I guess the other thing I would say to people is uh, don't be frightened of some trying something new. Um, and it's not a plug necessarily for Slate, uh, although I would love you to uh, try that too. But, but you know, I, I, if you look at a lot of organizations who said, yeah, it'll take us years and years and years to go virtual. Banks, for example, good example, and, and many others. And, and unfortunately, uh, for, you know, as a result of the, of the COVID situation, um, it's forced them to do it much more quickly. And actually, they found some real positives as well as some challenges and some negative so I guess the other thing is don't be frightened of some trying something new and reach out, reaching out to ask how could we do this um, uh, with partners, uh, you, you know, and other organisations. So that would be my sort of two takeaways. Perfect. Thank you, Az. And um, I'll hand back to Adolfo now to maybe answer that question. And we also got one other, which is which is similar, which is uh, this is what what's going to be our main focus as an organisation now that we're sort of exiting the pandemic. So hand back to you, Adolfo, to, to wrap up. OK, thanks, Alex. Uh, so on, on the first uh, question, piece of advice, I, I, I think I wouldn't know whether it's advice or it's just a, a reflection. When when the going gets tough, uh, as he has in the, in, in the past few months, you really rely on the goodwill of those uh, around you. Uh, and, and I think if there is anything that has really probably separated uh, companies who do well from companies who don't do well, I think it's, it's down to the goodwill that the company has, the employees are, are, are willing and capable and committed and driven and, and I really want to pull through for the company. That's way more important than process, KPIs, metrics, systems, cloud, uh, all the systems in the world. It's, it's really important to make sure that everybody in the company really rallies uh, behind that sort of common goal and everybody wants to do well and everybody is obsessed to, to, to really pull through and keep customers going in such a difficult time. Um, you know, Ars did a fabulous job. His team did a fabulous job. A lot of people did a great job. Maria, everybody did a great job. But it was all down to, to our colleagues and their goodwill that, um, that it all happened. Uh, and and uh, that's the soft side of a company has always been important. But I think COVID and a crisis like COVID has really highlighted uh, how critical that is uh, going forward. Um, what are we going to do? Oh, we're going to be doing the same. Uh, we started on a journey uh, um, that we laid out at the end of 16 uh, on focusing on delivering uh, for global content needs for the world's largest companies um, and do that through software, through, through services, through AI, uh, and do that and become a very automated language service provider, becoming a great source of innovation. Uh, and delivering uh, a competitive business, uh, very focused on customers, uh, and, and with a great modern culture. That's that's what we've been embarking upon. We're not done. Uh, it has worked well for us for the last couple of years. I think it's worked well for our customers. We still have things to do. We still have things to improve. We're going to stay the course, we, um, and we're just going to be very dogged about getting it done and, and doing well by you guys. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. And we're just at the top of the hour, so we'll wrap up there. And it's been a pleasure to speak to you today. And uh, thank you for joining us. Do keep the conversation going. Either reach out to us, to your account executives, um, reach us at connect at sdl.com or join our social community at sdl.com forward slash community. And um, yeah, keep talking and we will keep this thing. And uh, please do join the rest of the sessions over the next couple of weeks. Thank you very much from everybody at SDL.